Hey everybody, welcome to my new Photography 101 series. This episode is all about aperture. What is aperture, how does it work, and ultimately how can you use your aperture to take better photos? So let's get right into this video. So what is aperture? Aperture is simply a hole that light passes through. And in photography, that means your lens and the hole that the light is passing through, through your lens to get to your camera sensor or to your film if you're shooting film photography. Think of it like the pupil of your eye and how it expands and contracts with different lighting situations in different environments. The aperture of your lens is the exact same way. You can open up your aperture, just like opening up the pupil of your eye to allow more light to pass through, or you can close down your aperture and it's a smaller hole and less light is able to pass through, just like your pupils on a bright sunny day outside. Your aperture is one of three different ways that you can change your exposure or the brightness and darkness of your photographs. The other ways are shutter speed and ISO, but we'll get more in depth with shutter and ISO in the next videos. Now, something important to know is that your aperture is gonna be measured in f-stops or f-numbers. That's gonna be a term you're gonna hear a lot in photography, and you'll see it on your lens itself and on the back of your camera. And those f-numbers refer to the size of that hole or iris in your lens. I'm gonna make a video that's really in-depth and dedicated to f-stops, light, and exposure, but just to summarize, and all you need to understand right now is that f-stops are used as a way to measure light and how much light is hitting your camera sensor. When you talk to other photographers about photography or shooting images, you might hear them say, you know, stop up or stop down or open up or close down, and that just means Again, we're referring to aperture. When you're stopping down, you're closing that hole down. When you're opening up, you're opening that hole up. It's as simple as that. And the term stop up or down is again, just referring to light and allowing more or less light through that aperture into your camera. Again, just like the pupil of your eye opens up to allow more light in very dark situations or closes down very small to allow less light in very bright situations. So let's talk a little bit more about these little numbers on your lenses, these little F numbers. And this part is gonna be the most confusing part, but it's super simple once you understand it. So you can see these little numbers like 1.8, 2.8, 4, 8, 11, 16, 22. Those are considered F numbers or F stops. And these numbers are telling me exactly how open or closed my aperture is. Now, remember how I said this is gonna be a little bit confusing? So the smaller the number, say 1.8, the larger the hole. If we close down, the smaller the hole, the larger the number. So close down all the way is F22, opened up all the way is 1.8. So it's kind of in reverse. A small hole is going to be a large number, and a large hole, large opening, large aperture is going to be a smaller number. Again, it's a little bit confusing, but remember it's the one thing in photography that's gonna be the opposite. So small number, large hole, large number, small hole. You got this. So if you're shopping for a new lens, say you're looking for a 50 millimeter lens, and it says F1.4, that means the lens can open up to F1.4, the largest aperture, is 1.4. If you see a 50 millimeter 2.8, that means the largest the aperture can open up is 2.8, slightly smaller than 1.4. Lenses that have that ability to open their aperture all the way up to 1.8, 1.4, even 1.2 are gonna be considered fast glass. You'll hear that term a lot, fast glass or fast lenses. And those fast lenses are gonna be a bit more expensive and a bit more desirable than the equivalent lens that can only open to f2.8, f4, or f5.6. Now, your aperture does one more big thing in addition to controlling how bright or how dark your image is, and that's called depth of field. You may have seen portraits that have a nice sharp face and a blurry background. That's called shallow depth of field, 
Or if you see maybe a photo of a landscape, a mountain range, and everything is in focus, that's deep depth of field. The simplest way to remember how aperture affects your depth of field is big hole, big blur, little hole, little blur. So the more your aperture is open, say 1.4, the shallower your depth of field and the blurrier the background behind whatever is in focus is going to be. And the smaller your aperture, say F22, small hole, you're gonna have a very deep depth of field and more things are going to be in focus. Let's take a look at a quick example. Now, remember how we said earlier in the video that your aperture controls the brightness of your image? Well, for us to really focus on depth of field in this example, I'm going to change those other exposure values, ISO and shutter speed, just to keep our brightness the same or our exposure the same throughout all of these photos, just so you can compare depth of field and only worry about the depth of field in these images. As you can see here, I set up a little scene with my little Batman pop figures, and I made a foreground, a middle ground, and a background to help you understand how your aperture affects depth of field. Now we have a couple different examples here with different aperture values. We're gonna open up our aperture first to 1.4. You can see everything behind the foreground is super blurry and we have a super shallow depth of field. And sometimes this is referred to as soft focus because everything in your image is very soft looking. Now, if we close down or stop down our aperture to F4, you can see parts of the Batman in the foreground are a little bit sharper, and you can start to see more detail in the background that's out of focus. Our depth of field is getting a little bit deeper. And similarly, if I close down our aperture and make our hole smaller to F8, we're starting to get a little bit more detail in our background. All of Batman looks like he's nice and in focus, and we can almost start to see some of the details in the skyline of Gotham back there. Now, if we close our aperture down to F16, which again is a very tiny hole, you can start to see more detail in our midground and our background, our second Batman and our little scene of Gotham back here. And this is how your aperture affects depth of field. So start thinking of uses for controlling your aperture. Let's say you have a very distracting background. You might wanna use shallow depth of field with a large aperture, think 1.4, maybe a portrait, and you only want your subject's face in focus and all of the background to be blurry. That's a great example of using shallow depth of field. Or maybe you want that deep depth of field. Say you're shooting in New York City down the street and you want all the buildings and all the people in focus. You're gonna want that deep depth of field, small aperture, F16, F22, F32, and everything is going to be in focus. So that is everything you need to know about aperture to be able to control the brightness of your image and the depth of field or how much of your image is in focus. I hope you guys enjoyed that video and I hope you understand aperture now. If you have any questions, feel free, drop those down in the comments below and be sure to hit that subscribe button so you're getting all of my photography 101 videos. And until next time, get out and go shoot.